Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to design custom full screen page layouts in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and click on add new. We need to give this page a title. So I'm just going to name mine custom full screen page layouts, but you can name your page whatever you want. Right, so now that we have this page set up, the next stage now is to come over here to the template and we need to select blank template. So this is to ensure that we don't have the header and the footer on this page. So next we're going to click here on use the Divi Builder. The next thing we're going to do now is to go to choose pre-made layout because we are going to choose a layout that has, that has already been created. So I'm going to click here on choose pre-made layout. So now we have the opportunity to browse and choose which layout we need to choose. For this example, we'll be working with the fitness gym layout page. So I'm going to search for it here. Okay, so we have them all right here. So the page that we're going to go with is the pricing page. So I'm just going to click on it and then click on use this layout. Next, we're going to click on build from the front end because I prefer working on the front end builder. So what we're going to do next here is to add a new section. So I'm just going to come over here, scroll down and just find a space to add a new section. So I'm going to click this plus button here, click on regular, and then I'm going to choose my columns and the columns we're going to go with are these ones right here. So I'm going to select them. And then once this is selected, I can either drag this all the way to the top or I can continue working here. But to make things easier for us, I'm just going to drag this all the way to the top. So the next stage is to copy all these modules and add them onto the first column here on the top. So to make things easier for us, instead of dragging them one by one, I'm just gonna hold down the command key and then we're gonna do what is known as multi-select. So I'm just gonna click here to select. So as you can see, I'm selecting everything. So once all is selected, all I have to do is to hold one of these handles and just drag it over here to the first column. Right, so the next stage is going to come over here to the third column and we are going to add a slider. Select it. Right, so by default, we have these two uh, slides. So what we're going to do here, and you can see that we have two because uh, we have these two dots at the bottom and also here we have these arrows for left and right. So these are the two slides. So we don't need two, so we're going to delete one of them. So I'm going to go ahead now and delete them. And you'll notice here that now we don't have a slider. So what we're going to do next is to add an image to the background of this slider. So I'm going to come over here to my slider settings, click on background, and then I'm going to click on the third tab to add my image. So I'm going to click this plus button here. So this is going to take me to my media library. So you can use any images that you'd like to use for, for that background image, but make sure you use a large image. So I'm going to go with this one right here. So I'm going to click upload an image. And in regards to this image here, make sure that you use the image that matches your design. So you can go ahead and use any image that you want. So for now we're done. Let's go ahead and save. And now it's time to go into my row settings and add my background colors. So I'm going to come over here to my row settings, click on background, and then we're going to go to column to background and add our background color. So I'm going to click this plus button here and paste my hexadecimal value. Now, if you want to use the same values as I'm using here for the colors, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Right. So now that we have our color, the next stage now is just save. And then we're just going to come down here and drag all this content here and add it onto this second column. So I'm going to come over here, hold on my command key and then just hold down and select these two modules. In fact, it's three modules. Okay. So with these three selected, I can either copy or just drag them into place. So I'm just going to right click here, I'm going to copy the modules, drag all the way to the top here. And then I'm just going to right click and paste modules. Now we need to make this row full width. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon for my row settings, click on design, sizing. We're going to make this row full width. Right. So the next stage is to add the gutter width. So the gutter width is very important because this is the gap between these columns. So in this case, we want to make sure there's no gap between the columns. So I'm going to click here on use custom gutter width. And then by default, it's set to three. So we want to set this to one and notice what happens there. 
everything is now close together. And this is what we need to achieve. Next, we're going to come over here to equalize column height because we want the content over here to be in the same, I mean, to be the same height. Right. So the next stage is to add some custom padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. So for cutting uh, custom padding, we're going to add zero to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to activate this chain, add my value here. So for now, we're going to go ahead and save. And then the next stage is to customize our section settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to enter my section settings. Click on design dividers. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add some dividers. So we're going to start off with the top. So I'm going to click here on the top, make sure the top is selected. And then over here, we're going to choose the style that we're going to go with. So I'm going to choose here the style. Now we're going to add a color. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. And notice that the color that I just added matches the color here for this second column. Now let's go to the divider height. And this is where we need to add our height. And my height is going to be 8VW. And then over here on my divider horizontal repeat. I'm going to set this to 0.8x. Next on the divider flip, we're going to flip uh, both horizontal and vertical. And then we're going to add a custom padding of zero to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to click here on spacing, add my zero and then activate my chain. So back here on the dividers, what we need to also do is to make sure that our divider arrangement is set to underneath section content. So by doing that, you notice that um, this doesn't extend to the rest of these columns. So now let's go ahead and save. And then the next stage is to delete the rest of the pre-made layout. So I'm just going to go ahead now and delete all these sections because we don't need them in this design. So for now, I'm just going to publish this page and make sure everything is saved. So the next stage now is very important because this is where we get to add our CSS code, which is going to make our page full width. But before we add our CSS code here, we do need to go into our section settings, click advanced, CSS ID and classes. And this is where we need to add. So here we need to add a CSS ID called full section. So we're going to save this. And then over here, we're going to go into the slider module. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, advanced, CSS ID and classes. And again, here we're going to add a CSS ID called full slide. We're going to save this for now. Right. So the next stage now is to add our CSS code. Now this CSS code can be found in the link, which I'll in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So now I'm going to click on page settings, and then I'm going to click here on advanced custom CSS, and this is where I'm going to paste my CSS code. Now, notice that as soon as I've pasted my CSS code here, everything became full screen, and this is beautiful. Now, this CSS code that I've just entered only applies to this particular page, so don't worry about this uh, messing up maybe other pages on your website. Right, so with this added, I'm going to go ahead now and save changes. Now it's time to do some final touch-ups, so I'm going to come over here to my row settings, click on design, spacing. So we're going to start with column one padding. So I'm going to come over here and add my value. So this is going to be 12 VH. So notice that when I've, as soon as I've uh, entered my value here, now we can read this text, which was hiding behind this divider section. Now here on the left and right, we're going to add one VW. So for column two, we're going to do the same because over here you can see our text is way up there at the top. So for column two, I'm, I'm going to add 12 VH for the top. And notice that everything has moved bottom here. That means slightly lower, which is great. Right. So the next stage is to update our button styles over here on this main slider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on my module settings, click on design. And then over here on the button, I'm going to copy the button styles, save that. And then over here, I'm going to click on my module settings, design. So first of all, I need to activate use custom styles for button. And then I'm going to right click and paste button styles. Okay. So now we have the same style as we have over here. And then over here, we're going to click here on this paintbrush tool because we need to adjust our heading. So by, uh, by default here for the title font, we have it set to default, but we need to change this to 
Oswald. I'm going to select that. And then over here on the size, we're going to set this to 5VH. Now, what we need to do next is to add an overlay to this image because as you can see, it's quite bright and our text here is not easy to read. So we're going to add an, a, an overlay. So I'm going to come back over here to content, click on this gear icon, click on design, overlay, and then we're going to click on use background overlay. So as soon as I've activated this, you can see now that we have a color here that has been added to our image. So we can further customize this by coming over here and then we can play around with the colors here. So as you can see, uh, when I slide, when I click this slider, I can actually change the intensity of that overlay. And what we could also do is to add a specific color to this overlay. So I'm going to paste my color in here like that. And then I'm going to start dragging this slider to get my overlay. So now that the color uh, that I added here matches with my design, that looks much better. But of course, you can use any color that you want for your color overlay. Okay, so this is our final design. So let's say you want to add your header and the footer. Then all you have to do is to change your template from blank to default. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.